In this lesson, we will learn how to automate movement with expressions. Expressions are mathematical equations that are used to control attributes a certain way. In this case, we'll learn how an expression can be used to automate an idle for our UFO. That's right, we won't need any keyframes. We can use simple math to get this moving based off of time. All right, so let's say we go ahead and get started. Now we have a few ways of loading in our expression editor. We can either go to Window, Animation Editors, and grab the Expression Editor. Or another way is to go ahead and grab the object, and then choose the channel that we'd like to tie the expression to directly. We're going to be working with the Translate Y and Rotate Z, so we'll start with the Translate Y. We can now go ahead and choose Edit, Expressions, and take a look at what happens. Not only does the object load in, but its attribute as well. If we were to close this out and just grab the object and then head over to Window, Animation Editors, Expression Editor, you can see just the object is going to load in. But we could still go ahead and select its attribute from here. So I'm going to grab the Translate Y. Now, in order to tie an expression to this, we'd go ahead and copy the attribute, we'd paste it inside of the expression field, and then we'd have this equal to a certain value or perhaps to another channel. If we'd like the movement of this channel to be controlled by another channel, we can do that. We would add the name of the object plus its channel, the same way we see it here. What I'll do is hold down control and scroll forward with the middle mouse button so you can see exactly what we have. We can zoom into our text this way. So that's basically how we would approach creating an expression. Now, watch what happens if we were to go ahead and click away. You can see how everything gets cleared out. Can you imagine if you created several lines of code in your expression only for it to be cleared out because you forgot to click create. So that's a problem of course. So here's what I like to do to get around that. I'll go in and grab the object, grab the channel, just go ahead and copy that. Now before I paste it into the expression field, I'll add two forward slashes. This is a comment mark. This lets my know that hey this line should not be evaluated. So this is a great way to add notes. So what we'll now do is go ahead and paste the name of our object plus its attribute. And now we can go ahead and create the expression. From there, we can go to our Select Filter menu. And we'll switch this to By Expression Name instead of By Object Name. Because with By Object Name, once we select another object, its information is going to get loaded in. But if we go ahead and choose By Expression Name, now we're just focused on the selected expression. All right, sweet. Let's go ahead and rename this expression to stay organized. It's going to be auto underscore idle underscore expr. We'll just abbreviate expression so we know exactly what this node is. All right, sweet. So we're now ready to have the translate y be affected by our time. So let's say we do this. We're going to get rid of our comment mark. And now we can go ahead and have this equal to time which is going to look at our frame rate, which is 24 frames per second. Now, very important, after each line of code, you want to add a semicolon that lets my know that this is the end of this line of code. We can cause errors in our expressions if we forget this little step of adding the semicolon. All right, so now when we choose Edit, take a look. We've updated our expression. There it is. And now, watch. You can see how the channel has turned purple, letting us know that it's driven by an expression. If we hit play, you'll see that our UFO is moving, but it's moving very slowly. So if you want to adjust the speed, here's what we can do. We can basically multiply time by another value. Let's say we multiply by 5. So now when we hit edit, and play this through, now our UFO is moving a little bit faster. And remember, this is an idle, so we don't want it to move too quickly, right? But now what we need to do is make sure it kind of bops. So we can work with a function that will cause it to bop automatically. We can work with several functions. Let's go ahead and take a look at our function list, which is insert function. Again, we can choose between a, a list of functions here, what we want to do is go ahead and first work with sine, which is going to create a sine wave, a nice wave pattern. And of course, 
when we use that wave pattern in the translate Y, it's going to cause that channel to move in that same wave. So here's where we find the sine function right here. You can see once we select that, it's automatically going to be loaded into the expression field. If we were to go ahead and clear this out, we can go ahead and type this in ourselves, but keep in mind that it had a certain structure, a certain format. If we were to go ahead and press Control Z to undo this back, here's the function, and then we have parentheses. Inside of the parentheses will go the expression that we'd like to add to this function here. So let's go ahead and clear this out, and we'll type in the following. Before time, we'll type sign. And then we'll go ahead and add parentheses around time and five. So this is called a concatenation. We're grouping this together to let Maya know that this expression should be affected by this function. All right, sweet. So watch this. If we choose edit, take a look. Now our UFO is going to bop. There it is. But I think that its range can be greater. Right now it's moving in a, a small space. So how can we increase that range? Well, we simply need to take this entire expression here and multiply it by a greater value. Let's say 30. So we'll multiply by 30. And now watch this. When we choose Edit, you'll see that it's going to move in a much greater range now. Fantastic. So let's say we go ahead and finish this by working on an expression for Rotate Z. Now, I'll show you something. We can actually work with what we have here. We might drop the intensity. Instead of 30, we might use a different value. We might be able to use 5, actually. But instead of sine, we're going to work with cosine. It's just like sine, only it starts at the high point, whereas sine starts at a low point. All right, so let's say we go ahead and take a look at this. I basically copy all that we have here. We'll now go ahead and go to our semicolon right after this. We'll just hit enter to move to the next line. All right. Now we can go ahead and paste our expression in. We'll change translate Y to rotate Z. I'll show you this. If you don't want to type in everything here, you can go ahead and use the short name, which is RZ. So for translate Y, it would be lowercase ty. In this case, we'll just go ahead and type lowercase RZ. Now, Let's go ahead and work with what we have here before we go ahead and change a few things just to see what happens. We'll go ahead and choose Edit. You're going to see that the Rotate Z is not moving the way we want it to. It's kind of wobbly, right? This is why we want to use Cosine so that that wave pattern starts at the high point and it's going to cause our wave between the Translate Y and the Rotate Z to intersect at a few points instead of moving at the same wave. So watch this. If we were to go back to our expression editor and switch sine to cosine, which is COS, we can now go ahead and hit edit and watch. When we play through the animation, you can see now those two waves are moving in different directions. So now what we need to do is remove the shakiness from the animation, right? So it's really simple which value is going to drop that intensity. Of course, it's this 30 here. Let's go ahead and set this to 5. Now, when we choose Edit, watch this. When we play this through, we're getting a really nice-looking idle now. How cool is that? So again, this is all driven by an expression. Fantastic. So in this lesson, we've learned how to automate movement using expressions.